Hello everyone, this is uh, something a little special I decided to add to the channel. It's um, simply called Nick Draws, and today we'll be drawing a Banky Longway, along with basically just the general anatomy of the farmers from Clash on Clashington, as all of you have seen before. But um, I'd just like to go a little more into detail about how I draw the characters, and even into how I color them and digitize them, basically, if that's a word. I'm pretty sure it's a word, but uh, anywho, let's get onward. So the way that I like to start this out is I start with the head, of course, because the head is one of the most prominent figures on the farmers, and Banky as well, because he is a farmer. So the way how I start things out is I do the simple cross mechanic like this. I try not to make it too dark, because obviously I'm going to be... Um, Obviously, I'm going to be erasing this later down the line, but for right now, it's just a reference. So, as you can see right there, maybe the brightness is a little too much on the camera, but uh, as you can see right there, we just have that simple cross right there in order to work with. Now, the next part that I like to work on is the nose itself, and that goes right in the center. So, the farmers have that signature nose where they have the two nostrils whereas orcs and gobs usually have a different nose where they don't have the nostrils on the bottom but instead on the front like a snout. Now, anywho, since I had drawn that, that's going to be my main reference for now the other portions of the body. So, for the eyes for example, I'm going to have it where the first eye is going to be kind of big, a uh, little distant, also, just to keep in mind, this circle right here is basically a reference to what the, the head is going to be. So, what I also usually do in advance is I draw it like this. It's simply an oval. It stretches out horizontally more than vertically, of course, because that's just how the farmers look. And from there on out, we decide to work with the eyes. So, the first I usually do is the one that's bigger. The reason why I change the sizes of the eyes is because it adds a little more perspective to the pieces so moving onward I'm going to be drawing the first eye right here and notice how the bottom of the eye touches this horizontal line right here so also um, just based on where the character is facing I'm going to put it about uh, equilateral in spacing between the nose and the side of the head so we put that right there, and notice how it's like the shape of a bean in a way, or how it's curved and it's just ovular. And then over from there, we'll work on the second eye. Now the second eye is not gonna be as big, it's just as a sense to show perspective where the character's facing you more on the left side than the right. So now we have both of the eyes drawn out, we'll work on the eyebrows. Now the eyebrows are really a central part of the basically like the attitude of the characters because the eyebrows literally determine how they're feeling in a way. That's the best way I can describe it. So let's say this guy is uh, interested in something. So for example, the first eyebrow probably look raised, something like this. You have two curves in, two curvins right here. So that's the first eyebrow. And then the second one may be something like this. You know, we like to we like to make the eyebrows a little wavy. We want to make these characters a little exaggerated because, of course, they're minions from a game where the theme is a little quirky and uh, even to say cliche to a point. But now we have both the eyebrows done. We can start working on the mouth. The mouth is usually halfway in between from the bottom of the nose to the chin. And speaking of the chin, I still like to draw it because the farmers have that special kind of chin. But for this guy, I'm gonna have just a simple line, something like that. You know, he's like, hmm, hmm, what's, what's going on over there? Um, so now that we've added that, we could actually start erasing the reference lines because now we have most of the most of the essential characteristics of the head in place. So I might accidentally erase a little bit of the original, or at least the uh, the features that I have drawn after drawing the reference lines, but don't worry, I'll just be able to trace them over real quick. And it's also all right if the finished product of this does not look completely clean, because as I said before, we're going to be digitizing this. I'm not sure if I just made that word up or not. 
but um, it'll definitely be used as more of a reference above all. So I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna draw over. Notice how I like doing this with my lines. I never draw with a straight line. It's always all these curves and stuff, but as we move onward, we shall draw the eye back here, the eye back over here, and just refine the nose a bit, make it a little darker. Also, um, the darker the lines, the better, but I only make the lines darker once I'm content with how a piece looks. So there we go, like that. And now that we have the head, mostly done. We still have a few features to add on. We've got a little more detail to the mouth and by doing that I'll add this little flip there. And basically that just shows like, it's like the lower lip in a way. And then even over here, show like a curve in the smile. Now once we have that, the next feature we must add is the ears. The ears also pertain to the same perspective as the eyes where the left ear, since the left eye is bigger, the left ear is going to be bigger. I'm going to draw just like this and the ears of the farmers are kind of big uh not as big as the gobs but the gobs also have those interesting looking ears to say the least uh the left side looks a little a little too exaggerated uh the farmers are simpletons so even in a quirky world simplicity has its place raise that top right there it's a little better that'll do for now and for the second part we'll start right about here a little inward because his head is turned right about there that's good so now we're going to add the inside of the ears which is just like so simply um, the exact same reference of the line to the original pieces of the ear and so now we have both ears of the farmer uh, from here on out we'll finish with the chin and the chin is simply just a matter of going to the bottom of the head and then for the farmers at least just adding this little bump in here and then erasing the initial piece of the head. So that's essentially the head of a farmer. Um, we'll go a little more into detail. We're going to add hair of course, make it a little better. And the way that we're going to do that is like the thing that I like doing with the hair is I don't want it to get into the way of the eyes. Sometimes I allow it to, but I've added the eyebrows and stuff just to show more so the expression on the character's face. So what I'll be doing is I'll give this guy kind of like a mohawk, I'd say. So the way how I do that is you draw down. I also notice how I don't draw these lines all the way back because it's supposed to be like a sense of layering, layering, um, mark right there. And since his hair isn't just flat on his head, gonna be adding a little detail to the back so maybe some of the hair sticking out a bit just like so and then we can erase the initial line for the head like that uh, draw these down a little and that should work pretty well for now I mean I know it doesn't look like the best of hair but it'll work we could also give them some facial hair as well and the way how we simply do that is just work from here Notice how, like I do again, I layer it a little bit, give it a little more detail. And as always, this is just a, like a simple reference picture. So I can do as many alterations as I want to it, if need be. But I'll draw a little in there. And also, uh, since the frisks, the frisks, <laughs> try to say that three times quick. The frisks of his hair aren't just at the ends, we can also add some on the inside as well. You can draw like one up here, one going down that way, just to add a little more detail. And this guy has a pretty crazy do going on, but we'll keep on rolling with it. Draw right down here, put a little underneath, there we go. So just draw it out, finish it up. Kinda has the mutton chops of a Splug, which you guys haven't seen yet, but he's a, a special little character that will soon be introduced to the world of Clash. You know, that'll do for now. So he has some pretty interesting hair going on and we'll work from there. The next part obviously will be the body and the body usually starts out with, you're not going to see it that much here, but it's going to be a little neck piece and the neck piece is just a small little separation of the head from the rest of the body. Now obviously with these chops in here, you can't see it that well, but work with it however we can. So next part we'll be doing is we'll start working on the body. Now the body is initially the same height as the head, 
So we can work with that as a reference right about here. And the body itself includes the, the feet as well, the legs, but not the feet. And I know that sounds really odd to work with, but you'll see as we move along. Uh, for this part, I usually just work with a simple reference. And now the shoulders are always around, uh, right around where the mouth is. I mean, it could vary from character to character, as I said before, but it's always a good reference. And the higher the shoulders, the stronger the character, or at least the stronger looking the character is going to be. The lower the shoulders, the weaker they're going to look. So, with this guy, I want him to look like big and buff. He's a buff farmer, so he's going to be taking out some minions on his clashing tin on the field, whatnot. He doesn't care. So, I'm going to start his right there, the mouth over here. I'm going to draw these down. And notice how we're starting to get that sense of form. But this is not everything to it. Uh, we're just going to have his arms to his sides for now. And the way how we draw with the arms is obviously depending on how big the arms are is simply how strong the character is. Now some characters have muscles to them, but the farmers moreover just have bigger arms like the gobs as well. So for this guy, I'm going to draw him down to here and notice how this is the body, at least the bottom of where the legs will be. So the feet will be right around here, I'd say. And I always like to draw these lines just as a reference, as always, reference upon reference upon reference to give me this final result. So for that right there, notice how this body is also a bit of a curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a reference for the legs. Now the legs are simply just these, like this upside, like actually basically a frowny face in a way. I know this looks odd at first, but what you'll notice with the legs is that on the bottom, they'll start very small, but when you get higher up, they usually get bigger. Well, they always get bigger, I should say. So, we'll work with that, work with there. This guy is very prominent in his stance. He seems very uh, confident, best word to describe, confident in his gestures. So, work from there. The body will go up to here. Notice how it's all just like, it's really a fluent motion in a way. So, it's like leg, uh, body, and then it's just going to go out into the arm over here. Once again, I draw this line a little higher up than this line down here, just to show a sense of dimension that this arm is a little behind his body. And perhaps this one over here, when I draw this line up, will have his arm in front. Uh, actually, no, we'll just, we'll just keep it behind as well. We're gonna have this guy chest first. Doesn't care what others are thinking about him. He, he knows what he's gotta do. Draw this down here, like so. And as always, make sure that the, the arms are proportionate to one another. Um, I'm going to redraw that right there, curve it down a little more. And there we go, we start to have the body. Now, one of the ways how you usually separate, well, the clothing of the farmer is the best way to describe it. It usually has these cufflings here, or just like these sleeves rolled up, better way to describe it. So I could simply just add these little sleeves right there. Now you don't have to go on sleeves, it's really whatever you'd like it to be. Um, sometimes they have a belt, sometimes they don't. This guy, he's just gonna have a simple, a simple like button vest, kind of like the one that Banky has, but for now, we'll just work with it as is. So now we have the arms, we have the body, the legs are a work in progress, and we'll also have kind of like the sleeves curled up down here as well. And the legs, or at least the feet I should say, are a simple reference to work with. That's just a matter of drawing a circle, or an oval, I should say, and making sure that the dimensions just, just look appropriate. I mean, this is, the head is the main area where you need to work with the reference as best you can, because that's where the most detail comes from. Whereas opposed to the feet, and all the other details can be modified within means, because not every farmer is the same, but there's a few attributes and details that should be considered when drawing the character. So, I'll have his foot stood outward a little bit there. Maybe this foot's like a little off to the side. And then now it's just a matter of taking a look at them, seeing if it looks appropriate. Um, or with it for now, this is pretty good. So once we have those feet in there, we'll have to work on the hands. The hands are difficult, I should say. They're 
they require a lot of trial and error, at least the first times that I started drawing the farmers. So this guy is going to have clenched fists. And the way how it's going to work is this is his left hand. So I see the left hand, the whole fist right here. He has this, probably have this thumb underneath. But then again, he's also facing, <laughs> my fist is just in the way. This upside down, basically, because he's going to have his fist in the way. So the way that's going to look is the thumb's going to be out right about there. So there we go. That's an example of the thumb. And now the rest of the hand is kind of straightforward. It's just a big fist in a way. And we'll just have these bumps here to represent the three fingers that this farmer has. And we'll curve this down in a little bit. Um, we'll try to redo it just a little. So we'll have the finger sticking out a little more. We'll have the curve of the fist there. The bump, the bump, the bump. There we go. The bumps are going on the right way now. So it's kind of a big fist to work with, but I mean, like I said, this guy's a bruiser, so he should have a good reference. Now the other side, since we're gonna have the same exact kind of gesture with the hand, it's just simply a matter of curving it inwards like that. Adding this little hole here to show that it's uh, the, the, the thumb is not completely into the hand. Curve, curve, curve down over here. And I'd say that's a pretty good reference. So now that we have the initial drawing of this farmer whose name should be, um, hmm, uh, Lupo. His name is Lupo. Lupo, the buff farmer. This is also another thing I usually do. I like to label my artwork so I have a general idea of what I'll be naming them in the card. So now once we have finished this simple reference, we can bring it onto the computer, uh, scan it onto the computer, and work from there. Okay, so as you can see right now, we're in Adobe Illustrator, and it's one of my most favorite programs I like to use, especially because it's a what's known as a vector program, and I'll go a little more into detail about that soon. Uh, but first, to start things off, we'll file and we'll open up Lupo. So just give it a moment, be able to load up. It's not responding. It always says it's not responding, but it will. Here we go. So we got ourselves Lupo here. We have him scanned in, as always. And notice how the paper is tilted a little sideways, but this is our actual canvas right here. Now, the way how I usually organize it is if you see down here, there's the reference, and then there's going to be the outline. The outline is where I put obviously the outline the lines that I initially use and later on you'll see the color and the highlights and stuff so uh, to start things off for example I'll just show how I do the nose I go to the pen tool and then I stretch it out and it's basically straightforward like this now as you can see some of the lines don't look really perfect right now but that's okay because we'll be able to modify those soon and as I was saying before how this is a vector program that basically means you can make lines and then you can modify those lines however you'd like so for example I'm going to turn off the fill real quick and I'm also going to make the stroke size a little bigger make it a little thicker I also um, vary some weights like of the strokes just to make it look uh, a few more like a little more dimensional that's what I meant to say and in order to do so it's just simply clicking this to make it thinner or thicker and now I'm just going to modify this. So um, that's basically the gist of how I do things in the program. So I'm probably going to speed this part up real quick and I'll get to you as soon as we're ready to start coloring.
Well, all right, so here we have the outline of Lupo, so we'll move on to the color as of right now. And the way how we do that is I lock this layer down here just to make sure that anything I do to Lupo, or at least the outline of Lupo, nothing will happen to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, put it beneath Lupo, and I'm just going to label this simply as color for now. So you'll see my magic, how it works right here. I get the, uh, the pencil tool, usually, and what I do is I draw inside the lines as best I can. If I can't get it all the way inside the line, then I can modify it soon after. But I've been doing this for a while now, so I've got a pretty steady hand over time. And anyways, uh, we get rid of the stroke, and then it's just a matter of picking the color we'd like. Now, obviously, there's a lot, of, a lot I like to do with color schemes and whatnot, and you'll probably see it as I move along. But anywho, I'm going to speed this part up again just because it's going to take a little bit. Alright, so it looks like we're finished, but not just yet. There's still one final layer we need to work with. Uh, we have the outline and the color done. But the last one I always like to add in order to give it a little more, um, a little more of our feel to it, or a little more of perspective and dimension, as I've been saying before, is a layer I like to call my lighting layer. And that's where I basically decided to add like some shadows or maybe some highlights to the character, just so they, um, they basically like they come off the page a little more they don't look as two-dimensional and as such they look like they're interacting with the world so as such i'll be moving ahead and you'll see how i do it in this quick speed through And there we have it, Lupo the Buff Farmer. Now, as you can see, you'll notice how much like of a difference that the lighting makes to the piece. I'll just uh, hide the lighting layer. How it started out, kind of flat. Now, boom, a little more, a little more dimension to it. So uh, basically, that's how I execute like my colorization, the lighting, everything like that. I just bring it into Illustrator and work from there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoy Lupo as well. Uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, do whatever, because as you know, we always give out cards for free online for you guys to print. And furthermore, like we'll be releasing more videos down the line, of course. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name's Nick. This has been Nick Draws and I'll see you next time on Homebrewery Gaming.